I'm Gloria Brown Marshall. Welcome to Law of the Land. Dignitaries and presidents, media stars and celebrities from around the world converged on South Africa to pay their respects to Nelson Mandela, the warrior for racial justice. While in America, racial justice is still an ongoing battle. In 1918, Nelson Mandela was born into racial oppression. By 1948, South Africa legalized a racial segregation system called apartheid. It was based on America's separate but equal doctrine, which separated the races. In South Africa, the races were separated white or African, and then into racial groups, black, colored, and Indian. Trained as a lawyer, Nelson Mandela challenged legal segregation and oppression of his people at a time when, in America, civil rights attorneys were fighting segregation as well. Mandela and Oliver Tambu established South Africa's first black law firm. Mandela joined the African National Congress and led a campaign of guerrilla warfare against his government. Captured and labeled a terrorist and sentenced to life for which he served 27 years, mostly in solitary confinement. But on February 11, 1990, Nelson Mandela walked free from prison at age 62. Unlike Americans, Mandela did not deny hundreds of years of racial oppression. Denial could not bring about the forgiveness that Nelson Mandela offered to his fellow Nobel Peace Prize recipient, F.W. de Klerk, the last white president of South Africa. These men first met when Mandela was incarcerated. In 1993, Nelson Mandela said of de Klerk, I would like to take this opportunity to join the Norwegian Nobel Committee and pay tribute to my joint laureate, Mr. F.W. de Klerk. He had the courage to admit that a terrible wrong had been done to our country and people through the imposition of the system of apartheid. In 1995, South African convened a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to allow those harmed by a century of racial oppression to speak and those politicians who created oppressive laws as well as those officers who brutally enforced those laws to stand before once biased courts and admit to their crimes. Black South Africans testified on national television to life in slums without running water or toilets. They spoke of murder, torture, and kidnapping by police. Students and teachers testified to schools without books, chairs, or heat. South African men and women spoke of searches, beatings, arrests, and living with constant fear. However, America has had no Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Instead, it creates commissions with limited power after racial unrest and then publishes a report. America's first race commission followed the Chicago riots of 1919. In the riot, 23 blacks and 15 whites died in attacks by poor whites. A 700-page report published in 1922 was created to educate those poor white European immigrants on how to live with African Americans who had only come north looking for jobs and freedom. The Kerner Commission on Civil Disorders was convened after the riots of 1967. Its report warned poverty, police abuses, unemployment and poor housing and poor educational opportunities resulted from racism led to unrest in urban communities. This report was ultimately ignored. In 1992, after the Rodney King riots in Los Angeles caused 53 deaths and 2,000 injuries, a commission was convened again. Rioting followed the acquittal of police who had been videotaped viciously beating Rodney King in a park. The post-riot report titled, The City in Crisis, pointed to frustration over racial oppression and police abuse. In 1997, President Bill Clinton convened a race commission. It was led by renowned African-American historian John Hope Franklin. The commission's report titled, One America in the 21st Century, the President's Initiative on Race, had no legal power to make change. Testimony was not televised and it was very limited. Without a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, America's 
history of racial pain will be left to fester. When Nelson Mandela became president of South Africa, he changed the Constitution and ended racially biased laws and police abuses. While in America, where the U.S. Supreme Court decisions deny the reality of racial discrimination in voting, employment, and education, and laws such as stop, question, and frisk, and stand your ground, and higher sentences for crack cocaine possession result in racial injustice, time alone will not heal past racial wounds. Segregation laws ended years before apartheid was defeated. But America's racial practices continue and tensions rise. Forgiveness in America is difficult when racial profiling, poor education, and employment discrimination remain. At Mandela's funeral, President Obama said, Nelson Mandela reminds us it is always impossible until it is done. That said, Mandela's legacy leaves open the possibility of racial reconciliation, even in America. I'm Gloria Brown Marshall, and this is Law of the Land. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.